Okay, so like we discussed before, there are three ways you can run your scripts. And the less convenient way is the one that we've been using. And it's convenient when you're writing down a script and it's going to Z script, load your script. So I'm working with this script called my button. I can just open and load that script up. And then you know everything you need to know about I button from the I button video that I created in the beginning of this series. Now, if your script can all fit in a button and remember with the note interface, you can do a lot of things with just one button. You can place it in a macro and the way you set up a macro is by giving it a name of three interrogation points. And then the macro name will be the name of your script. So in this case, the name of my script is my button. So that will be my macro name. Now how you use your macro, let's see. This is where I have my macro. Well, my script, the script that I've been, that I just showed you. And I want to navigate to the startup macros. And in here in macros, you can create a new folder or you can just place your macro in the misc. Okay, so let's create a new folder just to exemplify it. Let's say my script and I'll just drag and drop my macro in there. And now if I go into ZBrush, I go to my macros, macro, got macros. I can reload all macros. And now I got my misc folder and I got my scripts folder and there's my button, my script. If I press it, a note interface pops up and this is just a note interface I, st I first started on the note interface video. So this is a way you can set up your script to run as a macro. So in the last one is plugins, creating plugins. So in the I button video, I showed you how you can place a button anywhere. And this is how you create a sub palette. So right here, what I'm doing is creating a sub palette in this under the Z plugin sub palette. And I'm calling it my plugin. Then I'm creating a button. And when you're doing plugins, you need to give a path before the name of the button. So I'm giving it this path, Z plugin, my plugin. So inside of Z, the sub palette Z plugin and inside of my plugin sub palette, I want a button called close. And what this button is going to do is going to use the special command. I close and this I close is going to close Z plugin, my plugin. So what this will give me, if I over open my plugins folder here, is when I load this script, I get a new plugin down here with just the close button. And if I press close, it goes away. If I press reload, it comes back. Okay, I can close this now. So this is how you can start working on your plugin. After this, you can create all kinds of buttons, sliders, and switches. And remember, when you're using switches, you have to use the I enable after the switch with the, the switch path, which is the same thing as the name. Okay. So if I load this up here, I'll get something like this. My command one, my command two, and my switch. And I can close, go back to the script, make some changes, press reload, and see how it looks. You can refer back to the I button video where I show you how you can control the width, the height of the buttons, put an image on the button if you like, and use a button as a separator or just information. If you want sub palettes in here, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I can just copy the sub palette, place a new sub palette here, and I say that in my plugin there's going to be another sub palette called, let's say, my sub palette. And this will give me a new sub palette. So if I close and I reload my plugin and there's a sub palette and it's open and it's got nothing in it. So if now I place one of these buttons inside of my sub palette and the way you can do this is just copy the name of my sub palette and place it in the path of my button, just like that. And I come here, I close, reload, open up my plugin and now I have a sub palette there with my command two inside. Okay, and I can have another sub palette inside of this sub palette and so on. 
So once you're happy with your plugin, you can simply remove the close button, save your script, and I'm saving my script into this folder here. And then what you want to do is it's common practice, as you can see with all the plugins, and I'm here in Z Startup Z Plugs 64. All the plugins have a script file and they have a folder with the same name. And some of them say 2019. You don't need to do a 2019. You can just use the name of your plugin, like I did in Mad Pony Decimator, my Pony Pie menu. Nick has done with his Nick Tools data. Okay. And so this is where I was working on. I would, uh, if I need a data folder to put my images in, then I can call that data folder the same name as my plugin. And then when you finished, you just grab that data folder and you grab this ZSC file, which is, I believe it's the ZSC, which is a ZBrush script. Yeah. ZSC file and your folder, you grab and you bring it into this folder. This is startup ZPlugs64 folder. Then the next time you open up ZBrush, your, your plugin will be available in this list by, I believe, alphabetic order. So my plugin would probably end up around here next to these Mad Pony plugins because it starts with an M.